John Beard with the Port Arthur Community Action Network here in Port Arthur, Texas. And our community meeting this evening is the first in a series of what we call community chats to hear from the community with their concerns and issues regarding the environmental contamination, releases, flaring, and other such industrial incidents, as well as talk to them about what we are doing as an organization to help make the air quality better, the quality of life better, and to assist them in the problems that they have in the community at large. For more information. For more information, call me, John Beard, or you can email me at pecanportarthur, Dot org. So this is the first of what will be a series of meetings, at least hopefully held every other month. Uh, we'll be doing for the next two years as a part of a grant that we receive. And our program that we want to have, or that we're starting out for this organization, which is PECON, the Port Arthur Community Action Network, is to educate, enlighten, and energize the community, to make the community more aware of environmental issues and also other community-based issues. And then, in terms of educating them, getting them involved in being the solution to some of those problems. A lot of times the problems we have continue and go on and get worse in some cases simply because we don't pay attention to them. We allow them to continue and think it's someone else's job to make a difference. But it's up to each and every one of us. So part of this effort is to encourage people to be able to come forward and to work together in a unified fashion to make these things possible. And that is why several years ago, 2017, I have formed this organization to help the community. It's about community action, just what the name says. But also if you look on that card, you'll see it's hyphenated with PA-CAN. And that stands for Port Arthur CAN. We all know, having lived here for a number of years, what Port Arthur used to be like. We all know what the west side here used to be like, and what used to be on this site, and at the corner, and the other corner, and, and the various places here. And while those things can probably never come back the way they were, it doesn't mean that we can't live and be more effective. It doesn't mean that we can't have a safe, clean living environment. It doesn't mean that we have to also be in an adversarial position with industry and with others, even in our own community. We can find a way to work together, to communicate, and to make things better. But we have to do it in a fashion that is reasonable, that is equitable, and that is fair. There's been a lot of injustice in this community in a number of ways and areas. We need to start addressing that. And the only way we can address that is bringing it to the forefront and discussing it. But what we want to do here tonight, also in addition to that, is to inform you about some of the efforts and initiatives we are undertaking to improve the quality of life. I'm sure all of you are quite aware of what's happened basically since 2005. 2005, we were hit by Rita. Three years later, Ike, and then Gilbert, Umberto, and finally Harvey in 2017. But we also got a close brush by by several storms, two of which Laura and Del addressed those issues. And a lot of that is caused by climate change. It's caused, as I believe, and other scientists have concluded, by some of the man-made things we do, especially the burning of fossil fuels. But it's also affected by other things we do. Those forest fires that we hear about in other parts of the country and the world, they contribute to it. Even the animals that we graze and breed contribute to it. You've heard about it with the cow, the cow burps and all of that. But all of these things are things that we can control, and we have to understand them and understand how they affect us, and most especially here in Southeast Texas because of the petrochemical industry. You probably know about the fact that Chevron Phillips was cited by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and now they're going to have to spend up to $180 million to upgrade the facility to prevent those things from happening. Those agencies like TCEQ and the EPA to help us improve the air quality. And that's why you'll see on one of the screens that we're going to show that there are some numbers you can call. We have a model. Can you smell, see, or hear something? Do what? Say something. You look at the flaring that is going on today with Chevron Phillips, recently with Motiva and others. Those things are cause for concern. And while we want to be good neighbors with them, we have to be conscientious neighbors and hold their feet to the fire to make sure they protect this community as much as possible. We have to understand how that's affecting the life we have here in terms of climate change, global warming, and our health. And we have to be concerned about it because, in my mind, this is what our whole future is about in this country, 
other parts of the world, I'm sure you see on the news, also hear from you about some of the concerns and issues you have, so that with opportunity, we can take those causes up and we can try to make a difference. Because it's not gonna take just one of us, it's gonna take all of us. And if we all work together, we can change our block. We can, first of all, we can change our homes. But sometimes changes have to happen right where we live and breathe at the house. And then from there, get with our neighbors and work on changing the block. And from there, change the neighborhood. The neighborhood changes the community. The community changes the city. The city changes the county, state, and eventually the nation. But it all begins with one, each and every one of us here. And I know you are here because you're concerned and you want to find out about it. That sometimes what you smell outside or what you smell that's unusual in the house is something that was outside. And a lot of us live in older homes that are not as well insulated, not protected from elements coming in and out. But those monitors will detect what's called VOCs, volatile organic compounds. Or in other words, when you're pumping gas in your car, and sometimes you can see it now, depending on what station in the nozzle is, and you used to see the little fumes come off it, or when you're putting gas in the lawnmower, you see the little sprites wither off it. Well, those are volatile organics. Those are things that get into the air as the gasoline itself naturally vaporizes. But what those things also have are toxins and chemicals that can cause small pollution and affect your health and your breathing. So, Sometimes it's not just what's outside, it's even the carpet that we have and the furniture we have in our homes that's largely based on petrochemical products. But they go a step further. And we selected those monitors because they also detect mold. And many of you, how many of you put water in your house for Harvey? Okay. And sometimes though, you know, it doesn't have to be Harvey. It could be a rainstorm if you got a leak in the roof or a leak in the wall that you didn't see and you notice the plaster changing color or whatever. And eventually you find out that mold sets in. And we were able to secure a grant to be able to give each and every one of you here one of those monitors free of charge. And there's an app that goes with it. And the monitor is real simple. You unscrew the back of it off. You pull this little plastic tab out. You don't have to take nothing out. The batteries last three years. Put the little uh, backing plate back on. And there's a little L-shaped plate that goes in the back so it can sit up. And it takes about a few hours to detect VOCs. And it takes about a week before it can pick up mold. And you put it in the living spaces where you spend your most time, whether it's in the den or the bedroom, put it in there. And then when you want to check it, once it's calibrated, all you got to do is pass your hand in front of it. Today, and I think there were about 200 people, standing room only. We had a woman in a stretcher carry out at some point because it was hot and there was a lot of people here. Um, but that was a, a horrible thing. 102 days that went on in this community and I want to report out to you guys that we carried that case all the way challenging that penalty of $12,000 that was assessed for that uh, response from the nuisance <clears throat> impacts from the fire. I know the, the whole neighborhood smelled like barbecue for uh, three months and um, I know y'all lived through that. We, we, you lost a community member during that part of that time and people had to be relocated out of their homes because of the smoke and the impacts. And that has stuck with me um, to this day. Um, but we, we fought and we got the penalty policy changed at TCQ because that brought an awareness of that the TCQ's penalties are not high enough. Penalties that were being assessed related to those disasters. So this group was very integral in, in doing that. I think y'all remember, this was after Harvey on 19th Street. Do y'all remember that? They set up that dump um, basically to put all the debris right across the street from the houses. Yes, ma'am. It was one of the first things we did was write a 10 page letter and told the EPA what was going on and said, this is a civil rights violation. We need to have this stop. We met with the city of uh, Port Arthur and they stopped the two, two weeks later that to do was bring information within a few um, weeks of that happening so that people were aware of the exposure uh, that they were doing as well as the physical damage and how to get help if they had suffered any damage from that. So that's part of what John's been doing. He's talked about living with air pollution. We've worked on air monitoring is a big thing that we've been working on. We've been submitting comments to the TCQ for the last several years about the air monitoring system that TCQ has set up in the region. So there are different air monitors that TCQ maintains and uh, has to report out on the quality of your air. 
you can get online and check these. You, the, it's up there 24 seven, you can go and see. So if you're experiencing some issues, you can check and see what your air quality looks like on any given day. And what we've been trying to do is making recommendations about more monitors because some of the monitors are in the right place to catch the, the pollution and some of them are not. And we are working to try to change that. We filed a civil rights law um, uh, administrative complaint against the Texas uh, Commission for Environmental Quality, which is basically our state. Uh, we also have been working on their federal operating permit to make recommendations on how to improve and strengthen that. And these are really specific legal things that we're bringing to the table uh, as far as solutions to improve the air quality and hopefully prevent days like this from happening in your neighborhood. Um, Port Arthur LNG, has anybody heard about this new planned facility? Yeah, okay. Expansion. Many of you live on the west side have probably received a letter from them talking about wanting to buy your property. And one of the concerns that we had, we had a, in October of what, two years ago, we had a community meeting right out here at the height of COVID, but it was uh, what we call a hybrid meeting. It was on Facebook Live, it was also on Zoom, but it was also where we met and you wore your mask and brought your lawn chair and we talked about it and we gave you some information on it because what we wanted you to know is something a lot of you probably don't know, that property in Port Arthur in general and in the west side in particular, is undervalued by 40%. And why? It's because of the environmental pollution and contamination from industry. We're surrounded by tank farms, by refineries, by the port, Oxbow, numerous other facilities, German pellets, and all of the pollution and stuff that comes from them just doesn't go in the air and go away. It settles down. When we have these mornings where you have dew, that dew is even contaminated because what's in the air when it's foggy, when you have dew, gets into those molecules of water. And those molecules of water light on trees and plants and foliage, and eventually in the grass and in the ground. And what do children do when they go out and play? They play in the grass, they play on the ground, they fall, they get up. So you're being exposed to these things every time through your clothing and even through your skin. I talked about a lot of times just recently, we were doing that tour today, about growing up on the west side, on, right down there on Welford Avenue. A lot of y'all who live from the west side know where that's at. And I remember we had fig trees in the backyard. And many morning, this time of year, I'd go out when I was a little boy, mom, and we'd go pick figs. And I love to climb up in the tree and get my figs. And sometimes, you know, like kids, we like to do it. With kids anywhere where there's fruit trees, we want to eat the fruit right off the tree, fresh as can be. Sometimes we want to pick those figs that way. But mom always said, don't eat them right there, take them in the house, we'll wash them because of the coke dust that we get on it coming from Great Lakes and the other sources. And petroleum coke and that coke dust is carcinogenic. That means it can cause cancer. It is labeled by the EPA as a hazardous material, but it's in the air we breathe. It lights on our houses. There was a picture earlier you saw where it was on someone's car that sent me pictures of it. So we're exposed to these things. But in dealing with the Valero expansion, they want to buy up some of these vacant lots and neighborhoods, and as they said, for you know beautification or to help the area. But I think it's to expand their reach across what we call the dump, across 82. They don't simply want that. They want to be able to use it either to expand their facility or as a lay down yard or even as a parking lot. For those of you who live on the west side by the old Texaco tank farm that's been taken over, We've had some problems with that through their business. But we don't know what the purpose is that Valero had. But what we did in having this meeting was to inform you to make sure you get the proper appraisal for your property's value and don't leave any money on the table. Well, like one lady, lady told me, she had her property evaluated and was told that it was worth $40,000. Hmm. So she got ready to go and talk to Valero. And in the course of that, she said, well, I tell you what, I, I want 80 for my property market where the cost has been depreciated because of environmental contamination. So she, they, the company said to her, well, no, that's, uh, that, that's too high. Yes. And what we have to have in this community is we're compensated. It's not asking for a handout or anything like that. But what we want is a fair level playing field in which to live and to operate, to make sure that we're treated just as fairly as someone else who lives on the other side of town or doesn't live here at all. We need to be treated fairly. So we have to stand up for ourselves and speak to those things and demand those things. And I believe in, in, in many cases that rather they go against a community that stands strong and together, 
industry would rather work with them and help those communities. And I have to say that industry doesn't do enough. I had one of the captains of industry tell me one time that where we get to the United Way, that, that says a whole lot about what they think about Port Arthur and our community. But we're not charity cases. That is this. The whole city is a membership. Every community. We represent people on the west side. We've represented people on the east side off of 19th Street. We represent people in the old Vista and Vista Village with regard to the flooding and the things that have happened with that. What we want to be able to do is just what you see here. We call a meeting, and we're going to be having these meetings on a regular basis. I want y'all to come. But not just come yourself. Bring a friend or a neighbor and talk about the things. We, we have a couple community meetings coming up on, Port, uh, on Blue Marlin next month. We're really concerned about the impact this proposed deep water project will have on uh, Sabine Lake. Does anybody go out and recreate on Sabine Lake on a boat or go fishing? There's a lake right over here. They're basically going to plan to build a pipeline for Meterland that goes under Sabine Lake all the way out to a uh, deep water port in the Gulf of Mexico. And then it's going to service these giant ships. They're called VLCC, very large crew carriers, to again export oil and gas products uh, uh, overseas. Um, we've got upcoming community meetings about this where you can learn more next month and how to get involved. This project is in very early stages of the environmental review process. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunities to get involved and make sure that your voice is heard. If you are using Sabine Lake in any way, this project could threaten. Um, you know, Sabine Lake is only like 10 feet deep. Um, and so we're very concerned about putting a pipeline through that. Um, we do that. And we have a Facebook page. We have two, matter of fact. We have a at pecan.com and environmental justice. Once again, it's not about trying to hurt or harm anybody. It's about seeking justice for people and a community that has been overburdened by industrial pollution, not being treated fairly, and being put in a position where you see what's happening here in our community. There are more vacant lots than there are houses. That's the part why a lot of people who are in reasonably good health or look to be in reasonably good health have heart problems. Yet they have no history of heart disease in their family. So there are a lot of things we're going through, and I'm not saying it's all environmentally caused, but what I'm saying is it needs to be studied and looked into so that people can live better and be healthier and be safer if it is environmentally caused. That's why years ago we got that clinic put here on the west side for people who didn't have a means of going there. Matter of fact, for Colin, thanks to Amy's work at all in Colin, we're able to secure a grant. So now you know somebody that don't have medical insurance or don't have any, you know, can't pay a deductible or pay, you know, the fee to go in. That don't, that's no, don't let that be an excuse to go see the doctor at that clinic or the one on Memorial because they're supposed to see you free of charge. If you're unable to pay, don't have insurance or can't pay, they're not supposed to turn you down. So what I want you to do, if any of you ever hear about that, and I heard about it from some people, and that's why I brought this up, and that's why we were able to get this grant, that they shouldn't turn you down. Everybody deserves fair treatment and health care. And the federal government makes it possible through these organizations and agencies. And I'm just thankful that we were able to secure $400,000 to help write down that cost. Or you can call the regional office for TCEQ in Beaumont. It's right there in Beaumont. And that number is 409-898-3898. 409-898-3898. You have the after hours number too? <laughs> Yeah, you can call back too, and it would work. But you can also go online on your computer. And the good thing about it is you don't have to give your name. Now, if you want to give your name so they can call and contact you back and tell you what the results are, they'll do that. But we got a couple other solutions for you too. Maybe you don't want to call a government entity. Who trusts the government nowadays, you know? But we got to trust somebody. You can also do something that Amy helped put together and with uh, another, with Georgetown University with Georgetown called Environmental Nuisance Reporter, e <coughs> ENR. Environmental Nuisance Reporter, you can go online to the website and you can put all the information in. And it's totally confidential. They will contact the agency. The agency will not contact you. And they will keep you informed as to what goes on and what's happening. And it's been many a times we've been able to get action on these plants with the flaring and all because we sent this information to them. Once again, if you say nothing, everybody thinks it's okay, it's all right. 
you got to speak up and speak out. And I know ain't nothing, none of y'all in here I know of, not the type to sit and hold your tongue if something's wrong or you ain't been treated fair. And sometimes, yeah, we get a little reluctant. But you don't have to be by yourself. Yes. I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, so one thing uh, Lone Star Legal Aid has coming up is an workshop on courts, uh, court communities, uh, to fill out information about different court impacts. And since y'all have the Port of Port Arthur right over here, get the Port of Beaumont up the way, um, there's a lot of impacts from the, the activities and things that are going around these courts that are going to be discussed, from railroads to trucking to air pollution and different emissions. Um, and one of my colleagues has put together a, a five-part series. It's going to be like every Thursday at six o'clock. It's going to be virtual, so you can register online um, and sign up, watch it from home. Um, we'll also have these all recorded and put up on our website for posterity and future viewing, if, if you like. Um, but it should give you a really good uh, understanding of different issues that come up uh, living near ports. Um, you know, from the German pellets issue where we had the fire to other facilities that help uh, support the port and ice letter over to the Beaumont office. They're in the process of investigating that complaint and that information then gets rolled into the complaint that the, they're doing and hopefully a penalty will result from that event, right? They'll get a notice of violation, they'll be, um, the emissions associated with that event will be documented and, and a proper fine will be assessed. But that community impact information of I had a headache or I didn't feel well or I had to stay inside, all of that helps the agency assess how what that penalty is. Yeah, today. Um, so yeah, today uh, TCQ had a hearing on the Sunset Commission. I, uh, they're up for uh, well, the Sunset Commission had a hearing about TCQ. Uh, there's a sunset process for all state agencies that they go through every 12 years. This is the year that it's TCQ's turn. There were people leaving buses, I think, from Houston early this morning <coughs> in Austin to talk about different impacts that they've been having in their community. We've got a cancer cluster in the Fifth Ward that a lot of people went to talk about um, due to creosote contamination, which is something our group has been working on for a very long time. And, and getting the, the people to share what it's like to live in these communities near these facilities and hopefully encourage improvements at the regulatory agency. And part of that sunset review process is to analyze everything that's going on at the agency and make recommendations to improve. In addition to that, you can submit written comments yourself to the P, uh, to TCQ as well as the PUC. That's the Public Utilities Commission. That's the guys that regulate electric bills at all. Whenever those bills go up or we hear that city councils gotten a request from Entergy to increase electric rates, you have an opportunity to speak to that, not just the city council, but to the regulatory agency of the state that approves it. Because if the PUC don't approve a rate increase, they can't charge you and me. We need to start speaking up about that. And I'm gonna use that as a bit of a segue to the recent thing we heard about on our water bills. So stay tuned and we'll be looking at that. So Amy, I'm putting, I'm putting another one on the plate about these water bills because uh, that's, that's something that needs to be definitely addressed. And it's, We'll talk about it. But yeah, the Public Utilities Commission has that sunset review also. And for those of you who don't know, what they mean by sunset is you have to determine by your comments whether that com that committee or that organization can continue or else ride off into the sunset. And you know what that meant, no wild west. That means you're going away for good. So that's the same way the government looks at it. They review these organizations to see to it, see whether or not, and the public determines whether or not they should exist, whether they're really serving you. And if TCEQ isn't serving us because, as we did saw the German fellows, they get measly penalties. They only investigate three out of every 100 complaints. Mm -hmm. That's a pitiful mm -hmm. record. 